Evening everyone, this is Nurse Honey Babe and Golgan, and tonight we are playing the Stanley Parable? Is that what you keep calling it? Okay. Golgan keeps talking about this game, I don't know why, and he's kind of forcing me to sit here and watch him play it. So You're going to play it? I'm going to play it. No, I'm not playing it. No, it's, it's like the walking. Why can't why can't you play it? Have you played the Stanley Parable before? No. no. Please adjust the slider until your computer is barely visible. Okay, so this is part of the test. Because this is basically like a test, so... <laughs> Until what's barely visible? The computer. Barely. Barely. That's good like this. I mean, I can still see it. I wouldn't call that barely. Enter the current time. It is 2101. It's 9.01 p.m., right? Yes. Wait, do you see that? Oh. Uh, the computer screen. Right. And you see the computer screen in the computer screen? Yes. Is this a thinking game? Because no, I'm not in the... it's not a thinking game. Here, hold it. No. This, this is, is a story, a story of, a of a man named Stanley. Here. Stanley worked, worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427. Employee number 427's job was simple. He sat at his desk in room 427, and he pushed buttons on a keyboard. Orders came to him through a monitor at his desk, telling him what buttons to push, how long to push them, and in what order. This is what employee 427 did every day of every month of every year. And although others might have considered it so boring, Stanley relished every moment that the orders came in, as though he had been made exactly was happy. And then one day, something very peculiar happened. Something that would forever change Stanley. Something he would never quite forget. He had been at his desk for nearly an hour when he realized that not one single order had arrived on the monitor for him to follow. No one had showed up to give him instructions, call a meeting, or even say hi. Never in all his years at the company had this happened, this complete isolation. Something was very clearly wrong. Shocked, frozen solid, Stanley found himself unable to move for the longest time. But as he came to his wits and regained his senses, he got up from his desk and stepped out of his office. Okay, that's your cue to move. I told you I'm not going to do it. Why? Because I don't want to. No, but you could just move. I don't want to move. But it's like any other game where you move in it. I told you I didn't want to do it. Okay, well look, this is how you, you move like a game. Well, then you move it like a game. No, because it has to be your mind controlling what? the movements. Then control the movements. Okay, well, where do I look? What? Why are you staring at a coffee cup? Because you haven't told me where to look. I don't know. I don't know how this works. You just interact. It's like you play games like this already. It's like the... Uh, what is it called? The Finch story? It's like the home story. Yeah, those were creepy. I didn't like those. There's something creepy here. Look. No, oh. there's creepy. Where you're the only one in a location. And there's all this abandoned stuff. I don't like that idea. Okay, where should I go from here? Really? Are we going to do this? Yeah, this is the game. All There's of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Go to the meeting room. 
I don't know where it is. Well, then why don't you just wander around then? No matter how hard Stanley looked, he couldn't find a trace of his co-workers. That's because they're all dead. Why is there the same fucking cup? Number one dad. I... what's it say? I don't know. It says, Stop. I like... I like work. I just hate... my boss. Mm. Do you want a cup like that? No, because I don't hate my boss. Well, then that's good. Do you remember? Don't you tell me where to go in every game we play in The Last of Us? No. I'm going the right way, right? You're asking me like I fucking know. Well, you always tell me where to go in the last one. You say, That's Don't because go there. I keep telling. That's because here. there's an arrow. There's an arrow that always points. Look at that. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Well, there you go. Go left. Well, maybe I should see what's in here. He's just going to tell you to go. Go, go left. Because remember, if you go away from what they're, what the voice tells you, it keeps repeating itself. I don't know that. What are you talking about? Yeah, that's what happened with the video that you showed me. About a broom? In the broom closet. Yeah, there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. Termination Tuesdays. Marketing Mondays. We're broke Wednesdays. Pranking floor meeting. Do not alter without consulting whiteboard manager. Get Chris out of the room closet. Hire someone to synergize papers. Papers are too synergized. Fire paper guy. Hire somebody to fire the paper. Synergizing guy. Who moved my desk? Please keep the targets on topic of blanks. Boss Appreciation Minute. Profits, profits, profits. What is hot? Look, the profits are spelled with P-H-E-T. What are you doing for the future? Look, we gotta look at the presentation. Clear skin? I mean, that'd be nice. Talk less. Read it. Let it ball let it ball up inside you. Talk take it passive aggressively on other coworkers. Oh I missed it. Go back. You can't read it. Huh? Everyone is unique. You most of all. Number of slides. slides. Slides, charts, and slides, charts. What do people want? Mm -hmm. Things, money, mm -hmm. more money, things, but with money to buy more things. Graphs, graphs about things in money. Rate it with charts on the same slide. Rate of increase in graphs per slide. Please, no more charts. Please, I'm begging. The boss appreciation minute. Okay, we already saw that. What is hot? Profits. Profits, profits, profits. Target demographic teenager stripes requires more secondary research. Colored in segment the stock market is somewhere here. Violet James, you are part. We have our product win. Ouch. Bye, Corley. Post review review. We need reviews for 
Royal Triple Four if I want to get rid of the death score portion in the primary reschedule. But I think that's a stupid idea. More water coolers, more water cooler heaters. Charts need to be more hip to appeal to teenage demographic. One of the teenagers is put in teenage demographic. Big net, some sort of child trap. <laughs> Teenagers, size of demographic, space between the teenagers, a lot of percent. Throw something in the ideas bin. What does it say? No more bins, trap cans, the meaning of the idea of firing the ideas bin. To do synergize core body expenditure, ship global market. Okay, go out of the other room, this is boring me. It's boring you. Yeah. Well, I'll let people know what you think so far. I just told them. Get Chris out of the broom closet. Okay, so I'm gonna go through here. Go into the broom closet. Stanley stepped into the broom closet, but there was nothing here, so he turned around and got back on track. See, you're in the broom closet. Yeah, I didn't even know about the broom closet. Wait, I can't duck? There was nothing here. No choice to make, no path to follow, just an empty broom closet. You see? No reason to still be here. It's telling you to get the fuck out. So you want me to get out? Get the fuck out. Okay. It was baffling that Stanley was still just sitting in the broom closet. There you he go. He wasn't even doing anything. At least if there was something to interact with, he'd be justified in some way. As it okay. is, he's literally just standing there doing sweet F.A. What's sweet F.A.? Fuck all? Yes. Go. You got me out of the broom closet. Go. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Go. Should I go up or down? Go up. What if I go down? You're going down into hell. How am I going down to hell? It's a red light. Yeah. See hell. But Stanley just couldn't do it. He considered the possibility of facing his boss, admitting he had left his post during work hours. He might be fired for that. And in such a competitive economy, why had he taken that risk? All because he believed everyone had vanished. His boss would think he was crazy. And then something occurred to Stanley. Maybe, he thought to himself, maybe I am crazy. All of my co-workers blinking mysteriously out of existence in a single moment for no reason at all? None of it made any logical sense. And as Stanley pondered this, he began to make other strange observations. For example, why couldn't he see his feet when he looked down? Why did doors close automatically behind him wherever he went? And for that matter, these rooms were starting to look pretty familiar. Were they simply repeating? No, Stanley said to himself, this is all too strange, this can't be real. Are you just going to stand last, there? he came to the conclusion that had been on the tip of his tongue. He just hadn't found the words for it. I'm dreaming, he yelled. This is all a dream. Oh, what a relief Stanley felt to have finally found an answer, an explanation. His co-workers weren't actually gone. He wasn't going to lose his job. He wasn't crazy after all. He, was he thought to himself, I suppose I'll wake up soon. I'll have to go back to my boring real-life job pushing buttons. I may as well enjoy this while I'm still lucid. So, he imagined himself flying and began to gently float above the ground. Then he imagined himself soaring through space on a magical star field. And it too appeared. It was so much fun, and Stanley marveled that he had still not woken up. How was he remaining so lucid? And then perhaps the strangest question of them all entered Stanley's head. One he was amazed he hadn't asked himself sooner. Why is there a voice in my head dictating everything that I'm doing and thinking? Now the voice was describing itself being considered by Stanley, who found it particularly strange. I'm dreaming about a voice describing me, thinking about how it's describing my thoughts, he thought. And while he thought it all very odd, and wondered if this voice spoke to all people in their dreams, the truth was that, of course, this was not a dream. How could it be? Was Stanley simply deceiving himself, believing that if he's asleep, he doesn't have to take responsibility for himself? Stanley is as awake right now 
as he's ever been in his life. Move? Now hearing the voice speak Why can't you move while shocked, he's talking? After all, he knew for certain, beyond a doubt, that this was in fact a dream. Did the voice not see him float and make the magical stars just a moment ago? How else would the voice explain all that? This voice was a part of himself too, surely, surely, if he could just... He would prove it. He would prove that he was in control, that this was a dream. So he closed his eyes gently, and he invited himself to wake up. He felt the cool weight of the blanket on his skin, the press of the mattress on his back, the fresh air of a world outside this one. Let me wake up, he thought to himself. I'm through with this dream. I wish it to be over. Let me go back to my job. Let me continue pushing the buttons. Please, it's all I want. I want my apartment and my wife, and my job. All I want is my life exactly the way it's always been. My life is normal. I am normal. Everything will be fine. I am okay. Stanley began screaming. Please, someone, wake me up. My name is Stanley. I have a boss. I have an office. I am real. Please, just someone tell me I am real. I must be real. I must be. Can anyone hear my voice? Who am I? Who am I? And everything went black. This is the story of a woman named Mariella. Mariella uh. woke up on a day like any other. She arose, got dressed, gathered her belongings, and walked to her place of work. But on this particular day, her walk was interrupted by the body of a man who had stumbled through town talking and screaming to himself, and then collapsed dead on the sidewalk. And although she would soon turn to go call for an ambulance, for just a few brief moments, she considered the strange man. He was obviously crazy, this much she knew. Everyone knows what crazy people look like. And in that moment, she thought to herself how lucky she was to be normal. I am sane. I am in control of my mind. I know what is real and what isn't. It was comforting to think this, and in a certain way, seeing this man made her feel better. But then she remembered the meeting she had scheduled for that day the very important people whose impressions of her would affect her career, and by extension, the rest of her life. She had no time for this, so it was only a moment that she stood there, staring down at the body. And then she turned and ran. What the fuck? This is annoying. If that guy's going to keep talking throughout this entire game. Why you gotta describe what I don't. If his co-workers were gone, what could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. You basically died. No, you played 12 minutes, haven't you? Or we're going to play it? No, we haven't played 12 minutes yet. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. I... I don't like that guy's voice. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. I don't know. This door? Probably in there. What is this? What is this say? Oh, that's the bathroom. What are you doing? Oh, it does open. The fuck? There's a strange.
Have you ever been in an elevator that actually played music? That doesn't count. Does count. No, I'm talking about music that plays in an actual elevator. Where are we fucking going? Yeah, have you noticed there's no numbers? You don't know where you're going. That was pointless. Was that there before? I don't know if it was there before because... It's the same room, look. It is the same room. It is? Yes. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Shocked, unraveled, Stanley wondered in disbelief who orchestrated this. What dark secret was being held from him? What he could not have known was that the keypad behind the boss's desk guarded the terrible truth that his boss had been keeping from him. And so the boss had assigned it an extra secret pin number, 2845. But of course, Stanley couldn't possibly have known this. Where is it? Go to the computer. What computer? 2845. Stanley just sat around twiddling his thumbs. Trying to input anything on the device was useless, since he could never possibly know that the combination was 2845. Yet incredibly, by simply pushing random buttons on the keypad, Stanley happened to input the correct code by sheer luck. Amazing. He stepped into the newly opened passageway. Stop. Go to the creepy door. Can I go up or down? Go down. Descending deeper into the building, Stanley realized he felt a bit peculiar. It was a stirring of emotion in his chest, as though he felt more free to think for himself, to question the nature of his job. Why did he feel this now, when for years it had never occurred to him? This question would not go unanswered for long. Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. <clears throat> Do you remember that? Have you seen that phone anywhere? No. There was a phone in the boss's room, wasn't there? You couldn't pick it up. I didn't try, because you didn't... Go to the mind control facility, then. It says escape. Go that way. What was the number? 914. Okay. How do you feel? I don't Although like this, this passageway had the word escape written on it, the truth was that at the end of this hall, Stanley would meet his violent death. Well, there you have it. So maybe so you. But of course, Stanley thought better of it and realized he simply had too much to live for. This is annoying. So, like, keep going through the escape? 
No, his voice is annoying. I don't like <coughs> it. Or do I go to the mind control facility? Just go to the mind control facility. Are you moving slow on purpose? No, this is how fast I move. I'm make sure I don't fall if the railing isn't there. The railing is there though. Press the bulb. The lights rose on an enormous room packed with television screens. What horrible secret did this place hold? Stanley thought to himself. Did he have the strength to find out? Go to the next one. Okay, now what? Press that button. Now the monitors jumped to life, their true nature revealed. Each bore the number of an employee in the building, Stanley's co-workers. The lives of so many individuals reduced to images on a screen, and Stanley, one of them, eternally monitored in this place where freedom meant nothing. What's my employee number? I don't remember. Like four two. I think it's four two seven. Are uh, you gonna go down? You're not even there. No, I'm trying to see if my cursor can click on it. No, you can't. It's a TV. You gotta go across the bridge. This mind control facility, it was too horrible to believe. It couldn't be true. Had Stanley really been under someone's control all this time? Was this the only reason he was happy with his boring job? That his emotions had been manipulated to accept it blindly? Go. No. He refused to believe it. He couldn't accept it. His own life in someone else's control? Never. It was unthinkable, wasn't it? Was it even possible? Had he truly spent his entire life utterly blind to the world? But here was the proof, the heart of the operation. Controls labeled with emotions, happy or sad or content, walking, eating, working, all of it monitored and commanded from this very place. And as the cold reality of his past began to sink in, Stanley decided that this machinery would never again exert its terrible power over another human life, for he would dismantle the controls once and for all. Go through the room. Turn around. So I'm checking to see what's on each table. When at last he found the source of the room's power, he knew it was his duty, his obligation, to put an end to this horrible place and to everything it stood for. Well, are you going to turn it off? Well, it's already off, isn't it? It's saying no. everything is offline. So what's Just your press right? off. You want to press off? There you go. Game over. Blackness and a rising chill of uncertainty. 
Was it over? Yes! He had won! He had defeated the machine! Unshackled himself from someone else's command. Freedom was mere moments away. And yet, even as the immense door slowly opened, Stanley reflected on how many puzzles still lay unsolved. Where had his co-workers gone? How had he been freed from the machine's grasp? What other mysteries did this strange building hold? But as sunlight streamed into the chamber, he realized none of this mattered to him. For it was not knowledge or even power that he had been seeking, but happiness. Perhaps his goal had not been to understand, but to let go. No longer would anyone tell him where to go, what to do, or how to feel. Whatever life he lives, it will be his. And that was all he needed to know. It was, perhaps, the only thing worth knowing. Stanley stepped through the open door. Are you going to go through that? Well, you heard what he said, right? This is obviously a trap. Go through. Look, this isn't real. Go through. Stanley felt the cool breeze upon his skin, the feeling of liberation, the immense possibility of the new path before him. This was exactly the way, right now, that things were meant to happen. And Stanley was happy. Get your first trophy, trophy earned. What's yeah. the point of this game? To discover the secret. Why do you think it loops me? This is annoying. I don't like this game. Well, why have you been upset the entire time? Because I don't like the the voice. All of his co-workers were gone. Wait, what I could it mean? Me. Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. I don't like his voice. No matter how hard Stanley looked, he couldn't find a trace of his co-workers. I don't understand why you wanted to play this game so much. Uh, because it's a game to see how you solve it. You saw how you wanted to keep listening to what he was saying? No, I didn't want to keep listening. I was impatient because you weren't doing what the voice was talking about. You were just standing there. No, I was exploring. And what did he just say? What about this? What about that? Ha! You see how I was able to input into that? You didn't do anything. Yeah. Why do you think that he was able to make the pink square appear? Did you just turn that yes, off? Yes, I turned it off. Why did you turn it off? Because I'm trying to see what I can or can't interact with. Stanley went around touching every little thing in the office, but it didn't make a single difference, nor did it advance the story in any way. See, there you go. Yeah, do you see the why? voice said so. Yeah, do you see why he's saying that? Because he's trying to distract me from finding the secret. This is boring. That's why. I don't like this. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. Ah, yes, truly a room worth admiring. It had really been worth the detour after all, just to spend a few moments here in this immaculate, beautifully constructed room. Stanley simply stood here, drinking it all in.
Yes, really, really worth it being here in the room. A room so utterly captivating that even though all your co-workers have mysteriously vanished, here you sit looking at these chairs and some paintings. Really worth it. At this point, Stanley's obsession with this room bordered on creepy and reflected poorly on his overall personality. It's possible that this is why everyone left. What are you doing? I'm trying to see if there is, he's wanting me to get out Stanley sat around waiting for more dialogue. Yeah, I but don't... when a long time had passed and there was no more, he decided that the game was trying to send him a message. So far, you're only allowed to click buttons. You haven't been able to pick up shit. So I can click this button? But at last, he'd had enough of the amazing room and took the first open door on his left to get back to business. He's trying to trap me. Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't five years ago. Look, Stanley, I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. I'm not your enemy, really, I'm not. I realize that investing in your trust in someone else can be difficult, but the fact is that the story has been about nothing but you all this time. There's someone you've been neglecting, Stanley. Someone you've forgotten about. What? what are you... Really? I was in the middle of something. Do you have zero consideration for others? Are you that convinced that I want something bad to happen to you? Why... I don't know how to convince you of this, but I really do want to help you, to show you something beautiful. Look, let me prove it. Let me prove that I'm on your side. Give me a chance. Why'd you do that? Because I saw that I could get to the stairway by jumping off the thing. You see how I was over there? Didn't you want to see what was up there? No, because he was trying to make me go that way. And you see how he reacted immediately, saying, wait, why did you do that? Well, now listen carefully, this is important. Stanley walked through the red door. You see this is a mind game? So what are you going to do, the opposite of what the voice says? No, there's a red, uh, what do you call this? That's not a wheelbarrow, it's um, one of these things. So I'm gonna go through here this time because I feel like I've already defied him several times, so now I'm gonna do the thing he said to do. Oh, thank, oh, thank God, God you are willing to listen to me. Do you see that I really have wanted you to be happy all this time? The problem is all these choices. The two of us always trying to get somewhere that isn't here. Running and running and running, just the way you're doing right now. Don't you see that it's killing us, Stanley? I just... I wanted to stop. I would... We would both be so much happier if we just... Stopped. And I think... Well, I think I have a solution. Here, let me show you. Are you gonna go in there? That dark room? Well, do you trust the voice now? No, I fucking hate the voice. I've already told you this several times. Yeah. But, but... now you're stuck, so now you have to. See? He fucked with you. How many of these are there? 
There's one on either side. Just don't have the light. Just don't have the light. Just go I have in. A shadow and a handle. Go in. There has to be a difference. A shadow and a handle. Just go in. I'm trying to see if there's a difference between these. Pieces. There is no difference. There is a difference. Look at the piping here. The piping on top of this is different compared to the piping here. No, it's not. It's not? There's no difference. Then how do I know which one to go through? You don't. That's the problem. So then there has to be a way to figure it out. Did you go in? Hmm. What do we want? What are we looking for? Hmm? Oh God, I hate this voice. Are you gonna move forward? Here, yes. Oh, it's beautiful, isn't it? If we just stay right here, Right in this moment, with this place, standing, I think I feel happy. I actually feel happy. <laughs> go that way. You don't want me to listen and stay in this place? No, go that way. No, wait. Where are you going? Go that way. Oh shit, look at the room, it's getting cold. <laughs> You don't want to see the room get cooler and cooler? No, I don't. Okay. Well, now you're not listening to him. Oh, no. Oh, no. Stay, Stay away, away from, from those stairs. stairs. If you if hurt you yourself, yourself, if you, if you die, die, the game will reset. reset. We'll lose we'll all of this. this. Uh, do I go back to the ha room or do I go up those stairs? Go up the stairs. I'll probably reset and die. I mean, what would happen? Something fall on you? The staircase breaks? Please, no, Stanley, let me stay here. Don't take this from me. Oh, okay. There you go. Please, Stanley, think about what you're doing. Hmm. It's a wooden door, you can't, there's no handle, there's no nothing. So what are you going to do, just go back there? I don't even know if it's still there. Oh, yeah, the it's still, still there. Good, good. We can't be too safe. Promise me you won't go back there. Hmm? Just, just stay here. No! What do we talk about? You're risking everything we achieved here. You heard me before, didn't you? You will die! What about this isn't getting through to you? Why are there stairs like this? Well, that's what he said. Don't go up the stairs. Well, what else can you do? Just jump. I want to know if you'll open a portal for me if I threaten to jump. I don't think there's such a thing. Uh, didn't he just create open doors and things just by... Well, then them? just go down then. There's a way for me to land on something. Well, I think you're about to fall off. If you step back, what are you gonna do? There's nothing you can see. do. No. You see, this is where, this is why I wanna play the game. Why? What is the biggest thing you say in every time we're playing The Last of Us? Don't do that because there's nothing there. Nothing yeah, but happen. I'm telling you to jump off the stairs. Right, but you're saying if I go back, nothing will happen, right? And I'm saying. 
what if, because I keep going back and forth, he's going to make an opening here. And you're saying, no, he can't. And what? I'm saying, why that can't doesn't he? make sense. I don't like you being idle. Are you, you are going to stay here, aren't you? I don't like his voice. Because it sounds what? I, because I don't stay there, I think he's going to open one of the wooden doors. Because if not, then are you saying that the only point of the staircase is to jump? Or is the point of the staircase to see if this door is going to open because he's going to say, fine, we'll go a different way? Well, he's not talking now, is he? I mean, what's the worst that can happen? You reset. Yeah, we reset, but we've gone this far. This is annoying. So you're saying this kind of game you can't play because you don't like the fact that you're challenging what can or can't be? Yeah, I'm challenging by jumping off the stairs and potentially dying. That's your challenge? Yeah, that's my challenge. So you don't think you think you will die or you won't die from doing that? I don't know. That's why I want to do it and see. But okay. standing there in this glowy room isn't going to do anything. But that's what he wants us to do, right? Yeah, and I thought you wanted to go against the voice. You think I want to... But if he thinks we think we want to go against the voice, he's going to say to do things thinking we're going to do the opposite to get us to do what he wants us to do. So if he says go left and then we go right, he's going to make us go right by saying to go left. Yeah, but he's told us that not to go up the stairs because we'll die. Right, and what if he says, I knew you would do that, so that's why I told you not to do it. Well, then let's see if he does say that. No! Smack. Oh, thank God you lived. You had me worried there for a moment. Now, can we please get back to the other room? See, I told you. You said you thought I would die. Oh, Did I? I didn't think you would die. That's why I wanted you to do it. What did you think would happen? The worst it was that we'd reset. By dying? Yeah. So you didn't think I would die. There. Yeah. See? See? This is what you want. This is where we can both be happy. We really can. If we stop moving, we just have to stop moving. You want me to stop moving here? I mean, you've already jumped off the stairs. What else can you do? Well, he wants us to stop moving in this room, right? And Stanley, go back. go back. There's nothing, There's nothing good, good that can come from this. this. Are you going to keep jumping off the stairs? No. No, no. What are you doing? Do you just not believe me? What can I say to convince you? I think you could open this door. That's not a door. And I think you could turn it into a door. Or else why would that door be boarded up there? Instead of being a blank wall like the other walls on the other floor. Because this is what you don't like in games, right? When I go off and explore thinking there's something there. And then you say, don't go over there, there's nothing there. Remember how I dove down into a pool and I said, they wouldn't have let me dive into the pool unless there was something down there. And then what was in the bottom of that pool and The Last of Us too. What, coins? There was a coin, wasn't there? And you said, don't go to the bottom of the pool because there's nothing there and I'm running out of oxygen. So I'm telling you that if you always want to go in the way that you think you want to go because you don't think a thing exists, this game, and it's my understanding, is made for people who don't want to go the way that they're told and that things keep happening based on what you're doing. Where if you just follow the voice, it just says the game ends and then it's not actually the end, right? It says, okay, you did it. But what do you need to do to actually beat this game? Because what happens if you listen to the voice? You probably won't get anywhere. Right, but so you get somewhere by not listening. Get through this. That's the only way to do it. Right? 
Wait, is it right in there? It disconnected because I went to drink some water. Do you hear anything? No. Let me see. There's no volume. Is the volume inside of you? I didn't touch the volume. There. What's the recording? Excuse to? me. USB wireless stereo. Okay, I'm gonna jump. Stop. Stanley, let's go back to the other room. Can you do that for me? My God, is this really how much you dislike my game? That you'll throw yourself from this platform over and over to be rid of it? You were literally willing to kill yourself to keep me from being happy. Am I reading the situation correctly? I think he's gonna open this door to stop me from going up this stairway. Let's see. Or he's gonna open something below me. Well, maybe, maybe you're just you're getting, getting a kick out of it. Out of it. I, don't I don't know, know anymore. anymore. I just, just wanted us to get along. along. But I guess that was too much to ask. It looks like you wanted to make a choice after all. Well, this one is yours. Do you actually want to stay alive, or are you just teasing here before. me? Let's show kid. Some other dog. I think we would have noticed this every time I went back and forth through the rooms. That painting. Where are you in terms of the? I just walked out of this room. And that painting is right there. Well, I don't think you paid attention to it for first. Did you notice it? I've been walking through this several times already, right? I wanted us to be happy here, Stanley. I really did. I wish I still thought that was possible. Is it over? It's going to restart, isn't it? I'm going back. I guess it took you long enough. 
All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. 914 is the emergency to call on the phone. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Breakfast, money, crisp. Is that like a snack? You remember what number it said, it said in case I was like, it was 914? Was that the number to dial if there was something wrong? Yes, you keep saying that. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. What could it mean? Stanley wondered aloud to nobody. He began wildly tearing through papers on the boss's desk, pulling books off the shelf, looking behind paintings, desperate for clues to his situation. But his attention was caught by a keypad behind the boss's desk. What could its purpose be? In fact, this keypad guarded the terrible secret that lay buried below his feet. And so the boss had assigned it an extra secret pin number, 2845. But of course, Stanley couldn't possibly yes. have known this. Yet incredibly, by simply pushing random buttons on the keypad, Stanley happened to input the correct code by sheer luck. Amazing. He stepped into the newly opened passageway. Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. Although this passageway had the word escape written on it, the truth was that at the end of this hall, Stanley would meet his violent death. The door behind him was not shut. Stanley still had every opportunity to turn around and get back on track. Still At this point, Stanley was making a conscious, concerted effort to walk forward and willingly confront his death.
Huh. Look at that. As the machine whirred into motion and Stanley was inched closer and closer to his demise, he reflected that his life had been of no consequence whatsoever. Stanley can't see the bigger picture. He doesn't know the real story, trapped forever in his narrow vision of what this world is. Perhaps his death was of no great loss, like plucking the eyeballs from a blind man. And so he resigned and willingly accepted this violent end to his brief and shallow life. Farewell, Stanley. Ah. Farewell, Stanley, cried the narrator, as Stanley was led helplessly into the enormous metal jaws. In a single visceral instant, Stanley was obliterated as the machine crushed every bone in his body, killing him instantly. Ha! Those are boxes. Turn yeah, around. Yeah, that was a different narrator. This is Stanley. And yet it would be just a few minutes before Stanley would restart the game back in his office as alive as ever. What exactly did the narrator think he was going to accomplish? So what do you think of this voice? Now that you know there isn't just one person. Hmm? Hmm. When every path you can walk has been created for you long in advance, death becomes meaningless, making life the same. Do you see now? Do you see that Stanley was already dead from the moment he hit start? Office layout. So this is how it was at the start. Look, the two doors. Read it. The set of two do two open doors was the very first concrete pieces of the Stanley Parable design. Once this room was created, the rest of the game emerged as an extension of it, an exploration of the contradiction this room posed. Remember how I say you can either go left or right? Yeah. Because what do you think that means? You either go one way or the other way, but what's the point of one way or the other way? You either listen and go the way that he wants you to go, or you don't listen and go the other way, right? Right. So this game is about doing what? You're either listening to what they're doing or you're not listening, right? I want a shower. Look. Let's see. Office computers? Ah. sounds Hmm. 
2013. This game can't be 10 years old. Let's see. Fucking boss's office. Wait. Can't be that tall. No, it's 10.06. Freedom ending. Facility. The big red button. What? Narration optics. Stanley pushed the number six. Stanley pushed the orange lever. Now then, this elevator for sure will get him right back on track to where he was supposed to be in the story. Not used in the final game? Now look closely, Stanley. See how it's impossible for the player to do anything in this room. Perfect example of poor level design. Textbook stands stood on the roof. It's the kind of thing you pick up on intuitively if you have even the most fundamental understanding of good and bad games. Well, in that case, of course, you wouldn't be. You, you'll probably spend the next hour trying to solve it. You dear. I'm just going to make this even a lot of hard work, and it really paid off. So, good job. Hmm. Hmm. What do we do now? I don't know. Stanley, Stanley, where are you right, right now? now? Where the other one? Where am I? I'm, I'm, I'm trying to figure out, but I, I can't. Stanley, who am I? Can you speak to me? What? What the fuck? Did this keep changing? Fun. I want your deluxe announcements. In the game's delay. Warzone. Huh. What, the Tron level? Alien base. Wait, what the fuck? Let's 
assim. Can I not pick up the phone? Meeting room. Maintenance layout. One option. Two options. One option, one doorway, two maintenance in the lounge. Obey this way. Two options, two doorways, two maintenance. Option, one doorway, two maintenance in the lounge and the original back on track option. Obey, disobey, to confusing ending. All right, what about this? There's a vent. Mm. <laughs> Hmm. I don't know if this is switching on me though. Okay, this I feel like this is switching on me. Is it the levers? Wait, what? An ending that only ended when the player restarted from the escape menu. Resume, begin the game again, options. For a time, the other in the monitor room can go up or down with the screen above and count down below. The unbalance when players found it too difficult to remember what was up and what was down, place the two endings together instead. Countdown death.
Excellent. I don't think that's true. Stanley walked over the bridge. When Stanley came to the lift, he traveled upward to the power source. Stanley pushed the big red button. Now then, this elevator for sure will get him right back on track to where he was supposed to be in the story. Where were all of his co-workers? Oh, I don't know. How about they're throwing a surprise party for him for all his button pushing? Does that sound plausible to you? When Stanley came to the lift, he traveled upward to the power source at the top of the facility to end this injustice forever. Stanley stood on the snow. Stanley walked over the bridge. Stanley stood on the snow. Stanley pushed the big red button. Then he pushed the number eight. Stanley pushed the orange lever. Stanley stood on the roof. Now look closely, Stanley. See how it's impossible for the player to do anything in this room. Perfect example of poor level design. Textbook mistake. It's the kind of thing you pick up on intuitively if you had even the most fundamental understanding of good and bad game design. But of course, you and me, you'll probably spend the next hour trying to solve it. Here, I'm just going to make this easy on you. And finally, he pushed the number nine. Then he pushed the number four. Hmm. No, this one doesn't have a time.
some of these options. Living room. Let me see anything else. And this. You see I'm in a museum. There's something wrong, there's something that I found in this museum that I think you should see. What? There are more skeletons in this world than humans. Am I Sammy? Are you spying on me? I don't eat. Why? I don't. Why? How? Happy bar. So, do you remember how I was gonna die and then I fell through and then they started telling me about about the narrator wanted me to do this and that. And well, this museum that I went into explains to me what they're doing with the game, what the point is, what the secrets are, what the purpose is, and all that kind of stuff. Um, there's different rooms that detail, this is why we did this, this is why we did that. Things like that. And there's one here that I wanted you to see. They explain like, you know, the monitor does this. And place the two endings together. I think it's, where is it? The game is now paused. You see what they, see what they say there? Trying to find the room that explains what the oh here we go. So look, maintenance layout. So this design this separate ways. You see how it says obey, disobey, lounge, maintenance, staircase. Mm -hmm. They're talking about like how they were designing the game to figure out like okay we want people to go this way we want people to go that way if they disobey this happens if they obey that happens you see how they change the layout and this was all in order to do what you see that they talk about that there's a way to like go through one but then if you change your mind you can loop around again by going through one of the other doors and openings there And look, look what it says there. Timer. Read it. In a previous version of the choice leading to the apartment ending, a timer would give you 15 seconds to pick up the phone. Not picking up the phone would lead to a different ending. Wasn't I on top of this cargo lift here? Um, no, that's something else. Wasn't that, that wasn't the thing that I was on that I jumped off of? Okay, so right here they talk about like the reasons of why they're making things this way or making things that way. So I went through all these rooms and explored them and, you know, got insight on what some things mean. But there is one room that says, okay, this is like the exit out of this museum. So before I hit the exit, I wanted you to see what it was going to be because I have no idea what the exit's going to be. 
Does that make sense? Push the number four. Or no? Okay, so I'm gonna go to the exit and see what happens. Okay. And the, at the beginning, you were asking like, what is the point, right? Right. But are you starting to understand what the point of the game is? No. Even even though it, it just. Zending. Oh shit, I haven't been here. Let's see. Now it's a trailer for this. There we go, here's the exit. So there's this countdown desk. You see, look, freedom ending. This is the freedom ending as it existed in beta. So many different endings. So I explored all that, and I'm going to the exit, okay? <laughs> oh. oh, look, oh, look at, at these, these two. two. How, How they, they wish, wish to destroy, destroy one another. another. How, How they, they wish, wish to control, control one another. another. How, How they, they both, both wish, wish to be free. free. So, based on the reading there, it's what I told you it was, that it's about obeying or disobeying directions, right? Because when you obey all the directions perfectly, you do get the escape ending, but you don't get anything else, right? So then the point of the game is, when do you obey the, the narrator and when do you disobey in order to reach the mysteries, right? Okay. You see which, how she said that they are both trying to control one another? You remember how I told you I wasn't listening because I didn't want to listen, but then I did listen because I thought he would set it up so that he would make me listen by not listening. Uh -huh. You know, kind of like, I knew you would not listen, so I told you the opposite of what I wanted to happen. Can you see? Can you see how much they need one another? No, perhaps not. Sometimes these things cannot be seen. But listen to me. You can still save these two. You can stop the program before they both fail. Turn off your PlayStation. There's no other way to beat this game. As long as you move forward, you'll be walking someone else's path. Stop now, and it'll be your only true choice. Whatever you do, choose it. Don't let time choose for you. Don't let time... Let's see, does that do anything? Well, you didn't turn it off, did you? What happened? I tried to exit the game by. There's another way to have it, so I'll stop it there. But do you now understand what the point of the game is? Is that people are observing what's happening, <clears throat> right? And it's not just the narrator, right? You already know that there's at least someone else, right? I don't understand why they have British people narrating this. Instead of someone with a Jersey accent? Not a Jersey accent, but I don't know. Well, what can we, what if, where is this company and who are the creators? Don't, don't you know. think the creators are probably in the UK? If that's the voices that they have? So, <clears throat> so the point of this game is to try to beat the narrator right so the narrator is going to tell you what to do you're going to try to figure out like how to get to the other things by not listening does that seem to make sense yeah and if you don't what it keeps happening you keep looping right right and that lady said the only way to beat it is to turn off your playstation because then you're not listening to anyone right, right? so now with that mindset because this is on a loop I have to find a way out of this loop, right? Right. And the game, 12 minutes or whatever, you also have to do what in that game? Figure out stuff during the loop. Okay, and Outer Wilds, what do you have to do in that game? Figure out stuff during the loop. 
Okay, so when I told you that this is like the Outer Wilds, how is it like Outer Wilds? You have to explore and discover things in order to what? Advance. And break the loop, right? Because if not, it's just going to keep looping and restarting, right? Yeah, I don't think I like that, though. You didn't like it in Outer Wilds? No, it got annoying in Outer Wilds. Even as I was discovering things, I'd be like, oh, this works, they're all like quantum. Yeah. I enjoyed the game, but I don't, it was annoying every time because you're like, well, how much time do I have to discover until I have to start back from the beginning? Right, but without the time pressure, then what would happen? You wouldn't be pressured to figure things out faster, would you? Why do you have to figure it out faster, though? Well, on this one, there's no timer, is there? No, I guess not. Well, the other one does have a timer. So... <clears throat> What is the one thing that we haven't done? What? When we start this. Hey, he's look, not talking. he's not talking anymore. Why isn't he talking anymore? I don't know. Is it because of something I did before? So if he's not talking, then how do I know what directions to follow or not follow? You don't. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. When I went to the left, I went to that room and I went to the kill. When I went all the way, I went to the escape. So I was seeing what would happen if I escaped. If I went to the left, I could go down the stairs and go to that red room, right? But I never went through it, did I? I don't know. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office. Hoping he might come into a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. But Stanley just couldn't do it. He considered the possibility of facing his boss, admitting he had left his post during work hours. He might be fired for that. And in such a competitive economy, why had he taken that risk? All because he believed everyone had vanished. His boss would think he was crazy. And then something occurred to Stanley. Maybe, he thought to himself, maybe I am crazy. All of my co-workers blinking mysteriously out of existence in a single moment for no reason at all. None of it made any logical sense. And as Stanley pondered this, he began to make other strange observations. For example, why couldn't he see his feet when he looked down? Why did doors close automatically behind him wherever he went? And for that matter, these rooms were starting to look pretty familiar. Were they simply repeating? No, Stanley said to himself, this is all too strange, this can't be real. And at last, he came to the conclusion that had been on the tip of his tongue. He just he hadn't found the w Let's see if this gives me a thing because I escaped by doing that. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. Wow, yes, this room. What a view, but eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. Did you ever go in that room? I don't think so. Did I go in here instead? And then I didn't go up. I jumped off, right? And landed on the staircase down below. Right. And so he detoured through the maintenance section, walked straight ahead to the opposite door, and got back on track. This is a loop. You remember how I was looking at the map set up and it said that there is a way to... If you went through the door, you could go back and go to the correct door instead. Uh -huh. Through the maintenance room. 
So if I go through here, it's one of the doors that opens, and then it's going to get me back on track to go to the boss room. But instead, because remember, I, I remember I told you that I went to the rooms and I saw like some of the map layouts that they had. But Stanley didn't want to go back to the office. He wanted to wander about and get even further off track. So now, in order to get back, he needed to go um uh, from here. It's um left. Close it on me. Let's see if I can get these doors open. Okay, it looks like I'm not sure. Oh no, oh, no. no, it's no, to the right. My mistake. No, 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 not the right. Why would I have ever said it was to the right? What was I thinking? It's clearly... Oh dear, would you hold on for a minute, please? Now, let's see, we went down right, left, down, left, right. Yep, yep, okay, okay, yes. I've got it now. This story is absolutely, definitely this way. Isn't this the, um, this is the mind control room? No, 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 this isn't right at all. You're not supposed to be here yet. This is all a spoiler. Quick, Stanley, close your eyes. Okay, 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 okay. We just, we just have to get back to, um, oh, who am I kidding? It's all rubbish now. The whole story completely unusable. However, rather than waste my time trying to salvage this nonsense, we'll just restart the game from the beginning. And this time, suppose we don't wander so far off track, hmm? Okay. From the top. Okay, we're gonna have to try other things, but you see he's gonna try to keep us going to that escape ending. Okay. So, we'll pick it up next time. So now that you feel that you understand what the point is, do you feel differently about the game now? Maybe. So... Initially, you just wanted to listen to him because that's when he says to go, right? Because you look at a game, the game points an arrow, and you say follow the arrow, right? Right. And when we're playing The Last of Us 2, I'll say, I'm not going to follow it because I need to get the other things that are in the other rooms, right? Right. And this game is about how games tell you to follow directions, right? Okay. So, the closet room is one of the first ones where you go in there, and he says, okay, well, there's nothing in there, so leave. And then you don't leave. He's like, why aren't you leaving? What are you waiting for? And then you stay, and he's like, do you, or do you expect me to say something? I'm not going to say anything new. There's nothing in here. And he says, why are you still in here? When are you going to leave? And then he keeps going, right? Okay. So when he starts to do that, someone who's curious is going to think what? What happens if I continue to stay? All right. Where someone who gets frustrated is like, well, there's something in here, so I'll just keep moving right all right so and you already heard based on what the woman was saying that what is going on between the narrator and Stanley okay. there's a conflict right? right and she said that one trying to control the other but they need each other and you're gonna have to help solve the thing right okay, okay so let people know that we're gonna go one of your final thoughts I don't have any final thoughts because I'm too tired. Oh, I thought you had a rash on your hand. No, oh, my hands are just dry. Okay, say bye. Okay, bye. Mm -hmm.